Hello and welcome back and today we want to continue looking at mobile apps for NAS in 2021. Today we are looking at the second QNAP photo tool otherwise known as QMaggy. Let's make our way into this application and we are using a Google Pixel 2 XL and of course that is an Android platform though these applications for the most part are available on iOS as well. So I've already um, synchronized this app with a NAS. I found one on the network and put the details in I should say but adding a NAS is actually incredibly straightforward. At the bottom there you can click add NAS and again you've got my NAS there but clicking NAS manually there you can enter the details bit by bit if you choose or click the circle icon at the top and if there's any NASs on your local area network you can add them in that way or at the bottom right signing with QID will allow you to enter your remote credentials and then add a NAS remotely although we're not going to do that right now. So I've added in the NAS before we go in we can go into the settings menu there and at the top that's another way in which you can uh, connect with your NAS remotely over the, the internet rather than the network and there's lots of little options here with regards to auto login yes or no then how you want to view it if you want it to be in thumbnail generate uh, in thumbnails or list format as well as the size of those and um, again storage management is if you want to utilize the download folder on your local phone and how much space you want to take up already available there and going down uploads and downloads you can choose whether you want this to action at a whim or only when there are Wi-Fi uh, networks readily available and of course the backup option as well and you can have this device to upload photos automatically from your mobile device to your NAS but bear in mind this isn't automatic in the same way that uh, some apps when you take a picture it goes directly up to the NAS this will be a backup tool running in the background that over time will incrementally upload things as they happen. It will notice changes, but I don't think it's quite as snappy as an automatic upload as found in the likes of Google Photos. It's still pretty fast, but nevertheless, it isn't quite as responsive as what we've seen from Google Photos and their auto downloads there. Now, it's still an option that, that uploading it's, it's something you don't see a lot of NAS brands providing and certainly QNAP Photo Station did not include that service so it's nice to see it there. Um, if we log into the NAS we can have a good look and straight away we're logged in there directly into uh, the photo collection there from our Q Maggie's um, selection of albums. The thumbnail generation there nice and quick but again we are accessing this device via the network so we would hope that it would be quite a fast speed there and again that is our general photo collection there ready available on screen and if we select a photo let's go for a random picture of my cat as always let's go for the one there that's Tammy uh, going nuts uh, we can go there and find out what information we can find there so again get a little bit of information a little bit of the metadata there has been scraped a little bit of information there Further on, we can go ahead and show the tagged people if people are tagged in it. We're going to go through some of those tags later. You've got that 360 panorama mode that I know a number of people don't really use. But still, it's nice to have that as an option. Same goes for the 3D mode down. I know we're looking at this in vertical, but in horizontal, that would make a lot more sense. And again, we can go ahead and share that file if we want with a link with other users. So again, Facebook, Twitter... YouTube, um, um, uh, Messenger, anything like that. Same goes, we can download that file if we want directly into our phone if we choose. And that's about it, really. Uh, there's lots of bit, uh, little options there. And again, you can apply small edits as well, but not really much. There's rotation options and stuff like that, but not really much else that you can do with the editing mode on that. That looks like it could still do with a few extra features. So, that's having a look at the main overview there and again we can flick between shared photos or all photos so if you're running a kind of uh, photo suite or if you're a photographer sharing um, uh, uh, portfolios that's one option there and again at the bottom we've got a plus symbol if we choose we can go ahead and take a picture so here's one of my laptop and the mic and everything on screen bang and that will now automatically upload that picture to the NAS and that's just been uploaded so that photo there is then going to get added to the collection nice and easily. It'll be in a new customized folder. So again, you can upload things manually if you choose rather than take a picture. But again, not quite as smooth a run as one would have um, had in the past from Google Photos. But it is remarkably close now. 
Now, the real fun has to be said that at the bottom here, these four options. Now, at the moment, we are looking at all photos. But the next option is the smart, intelligent albums. These are the ones that the AI core of QMaggy have done the job for us. So, for example, with the facial recognition and the tagging, all of the people that we've got tagged are readily available here on screen. This is Gerard. As you can see, it's centered him out in all these pictures and along with other people too. However, it is worth highlighting that you can't actually use the AI tagging here on the app in the way that you can on the desktop, which for me is a real shame because the photo recognition is such, such, such a big part of what QMaggy is about. And on the desktop, you can see all the available pictures on screen and tag them and name people. But on the mobile, all you can see are the people that you've already pre-tagged on the desktop, which for me is a tremendous downside of this app. It's still an incredibly good app, but the fact I can't tag people on the mobile app is a bit of a shame. Now, obviously, geolocational data um, and location um, and um, uh, other metadata has been scraped. So before we go into things, we can look at places. And in places, if we've been to a place, all of that data is getting recognized. So for example, here's when I went to Berlin, there's lots of uh, pictures that have been taken there. And all of that is based on the locational data racked up in that metadata. But the real interesting thing is that things tab. This is when the AI core recognizes the content of the photos and that AI, not dissimilar to that of Google Photos, it recognizes what's in the picture and therefore can help you search in an intelligent manner. So I have not named these photos sand, sports, pasta, beer, burgers, rice, and train. The AI core has identified these by analyzing the pictures, which means if I'm looking for preset photos afterwards, all I've got to do is scan through and find them. And this is only five albums. Imagine you've got a decade of photos to scan through and you don't really want to upload them to Facebook or upload them to Google Photos. This is a nice, handy, useful tool. And you can use this to search as well. You can search through. And again, lots of options there with regard to tags, people and more. And you can go ahead and search in an intelligent manner. Now, that's really it for the smart features there's a few others that i've never really seen happen much in the past so we have for example events these have this is cross-referenced against timelines but i don't find it to be the most reliable and it's mm, just sort of sitting there as another box on the layout that i don't really use same goes for keywords but i'm sure there are users out there that would use it now you have got um, the kind of updated ones along the bottom that use some of the stuff we talked about in Photo Station, such as Burst and that 360 Photos thing again. But again, none of these are quite the same. And although it looks like they have added a tab for live photos, being an Android user, I can't really use that at this stage. Um, going out of it there, we can go to the next tab, which is, again, something that's so simple, so straightforward, but still something that QNAP's biggest rival um, Synology doesn't seem to want to entertain. The simple idea that I might want to use pre-selected albums on the NAS, AI-assisted photo recognition on albums, and quite simply, the ability to browse folders. The ability for me to just browse files and folders on my NAS, something that is just not available on the QNAP platform. Now, you do have to go uh, on the Synology platform. You do have to go into the app itself and select, select which of the root folders you want access to using Multimedia Console, but there really is no limitation in that. Now, the last option, of course, is if you want to browse the albums on your phone itself, and this allows you to just go straight ahead and look at the albums on your phone and then upload directly from there. So if we look at the, um, let's go for an album there, messenger there that's filled with different images and stuff we can go in there select a photo and then from there if we choose we can upload that to the nas and we still got all of those same options but the fact still remains that uh, qmaggy's uh, mobile application from qnap is significantly better smoother more responsive and enjoyable than that of photo station right now i don't know if qnap are ever going to go down that road of merging photo station and qmaggy into a single app which is what Synology did with Synology Photos, but short of the ability 
to tag people on your phone rather than the client app and uh, probably a slightly more snappier way to automatically upload photos taken to the NAS, I do think QMaggie mobile application is certainly a decent little runner for those of you out there that want to use your NAS for day-to-day -day photography and want to back up the content of your phone with ease. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, click like and subscribe if you want to learn more. I'll be covering loads more of these mobile apps this year, so do stay tuned for that or pop your requests in the comments. I will see you next time.